It's called Spear, so get that multi-strike move. If your opponent's holding a Focus Sash, doesn't matter. Gonna hit multiple times, break it, and deal damage. Let's go, trainers. Good day, good dance. Let's get going with King Gambit and Volcarona versus Incineroar and Amoongus. <laughs> and Incineroar going for the Intimidate turn one, but that is exactly what that King Gambit is for, getting the Defiant boost to its attack. So going to one stage of increased attack, and that's gonna put it in a good spot to be able to dish out some damage in the following turns. Of course, his Volcarona is running the the Covert Cloak, so it's not going to be susceptible to a fake out from the Incineroar and instead can go straight on the offensive. But a heat wave from a Volcarona isn't enough to be able to knock out an Amoongus in one. And so both of these players have got to be really careful about how they play this turn. Uh, for Joanne, it's the, you know, do I go for an attack? Do I go for a Quiver Dance? Do I get things going? And for Matty, can I get an opportunity to get a Spore on the field? And you call it Ben Amoongus takes about half health from that heat wave there. An opportunity to have its Citrus Berry as well. Recover a little bit of HP since its health went down to about half. Now Parting Shot able to connect down onto the Volcarona here, lowering its offensive prowess, specifically the special attack here, that is the side that Volcarona hits on. And now Matty will be revealing a Pokemon here from the back, hoping to threaten down this King Gamut, and indeed both the Pokemon and Joanne's side of the field, Among this not being the most offensive threat. Gondozo coming in here with its unaware ability, but of course, oh. King Gambit knows exactly where to target, goes into the Amoongus, doesn't matter if it's munched on its Citrus Berry already, it is going down. Yeah, Don Dozo, now big fish in a, uh, well, pretty small pond right now, certainly making the rest of the pond look smaller. Sneasler joins the field here, that threatening big, doubly super effective damage onto the King Gambit here. Volcarona, you've got to be careful of, because with the flame body ability burning any physical attacker, and Matt has got two of them on the field right now. Don Dozo does, though, have the Terra Fire, so that would keep it safe from any burns. And of course, this Volcarona, I, and I'm, I'm gonna have to double check this. I believe that Volcarona does have the ability to go for Rage Powder as well to keep that uh, King Gambit safe. Right, yeah, Rage Powder, of course, redirecting away moves. But King Gambit already going for the Terrestrialization. Let's get Gadance going. Halloween may be over, but Terra Ghost is certainly what this spooky King Gambit is going to be rocking right now. And Protect coming out from Sneasler. Just wants to scout out for the turn, see what's going to be going down. Now, coming over to the Volcarona, oh. gets an opportunity to go for the Quiver Dance here. Boosting up its special attack, its special defense, and indeed its speed. Setting up is something you've got to be really careful of in regulation set age. No need to redirect if you don't actually take any damage whatsoever with the King Gambit okay. from a close combat. But here it is, the Dondozo going for a curse, getting its boosts set up, both its defenses and its attack, and lowering the speed stat, which, well, let's be honest, Dondozo's not the fastest fish out there. <laughs> no, it's certainly not. But uh, Wave Crash, interesting that that is the move of choice on this Dondozo, because it's the only damaging move it has, and it's going to be taking recoil damage. So slowly but surely, it will be whittling itself away. And the more damage it deals, the more recoil damage it takes. So we've got to be very, very careful here. Matty hovering over the Terror Fire to protect itself from any potential burns coming out from the Flame Body Volcarona. And that's going to be a real big deal, whether or not the Sneasler does target down into the Volcarona, get that flame uh, body activation that's going to reduce the damage that it takes, but of course, also going to break that Focus Sash. And Matty just not wanting to risk it this turn whatsoever, bringing Incineroar in, giving the... Uh, <laughs> giving the uh, King Gambit yet another defiant boost. Uh, but it is the unaware, I believe, on the... Um, on the Dondozo. On the, on the Dondozo, which does help it able to take those attacks just that little bit better. The yeah, unaware, of course, ignoring any snap boost from the opposing side. Haven't seen a Terra Fire Dondozo for a little while, trainers, but it's time for this Dondozo to completely flip its typing on its head. It's gone from a water type into a fire, leading the way, but it's going to be Heat Wave coming down now. Incineroar dodging, not going to be doing too much damage to that Pokemon anyway. Countout Cleave also resisted into the Incineroar, but every little bit of chip damage counts. Now time for the Wave Crash. Dondozo does not mind hitting into this King Gambit one bit. It's a really good amount of damage. It's a really heavy attacker, and you can see why trainers are choosing to run Dozo without the Tatsugiri at the moment. And of course that Volcarona, because it's not carrying, or it's not carrying Terra Grass, it's carrying Terra Fairy, in fact, 
So now this terrifier Dondozo is in a really strong position. A Volcarona can't boost over it to make sure that it's doing lots of damage because, well, Dondozo's unaware of all of those boosts. It can't hit it for super effective damage. The King Gambit's got boosts on the field that really uh, aren't going to be effective against Dondozo again because of the unaware. And yeah, Incineroar doesn't look like a great switch in, but it does resist King Gambit as well. So Maddie playing this really nicely. So Sucker Punch there, that only works if the Pokemon is going for a damaging move. Must have been targeting into that Incineroar, going for the parting shot into the Volcarona. So no damage done there. But this Incineroar doing its best to keep this Dancing Moth in place and not getting too many Quiver Dances set up. As Sneasler of the distant past rushes right from the past into the present. <laughs> into the present indeed. Just as Dondozo goes for its second wave crash into the King Gambit, does take the knockout there. It's going to have to take a little bit of chip damage from the recoil on wave crash for its troubles uh, but i think that's a trade that you really are quite happy making if you're matty it's like yeah would i prefer a two plus king gambit to be on the field or to be not on the field <laughs> and i think most players uh, just correct me if i'm wrong here, Charlie, yeah, most yeah. players probably err on the side of the king gambit not on the field i mean you can see the pros and cons list there but ultimately yeah that king gambit now gone now joanne sneezler coming onto the field now too and at joanne's own sneezler here it doesn't have access to fake out does have access to coaching though that's something that would give volcarona a nice boost to its defenses especially in the face of this physical attacking dondoza that threatens it with super effective damage and of course volcarona can no longer terrestrialize it having been spent on the king gambit this is a nice adaptation that sneezler has had in this format it's gone from being a fake out pokemon to people realizing that's like Actually, it's got quite good options, and a lot of the time you do actually want to be able to protect it to make sure that it can go for coaching, or in Matty's case, can go for a taunt. Not going to be as relevant in this situation, but here we go. Volcarona going for a heat wave. It's had two quiver dances, it's got two speed boosts, and now it gets taunted by the Sneasler on Matty's side. Just make sure that it can't tear it away from its uh, water weakness, and also uh, that it can't boost up any further. Dondozo is going to shield itself from the close combat here and leftovers providing all important recovery time and time again We've seen a Pokemon brought down to about the level of health Dondozo is now But with that leftovers ticking away can end up near back to full HP if it's left alone on the field It certainly could I mean, you know at some point It's gonna to have to start wave crashing and, and Matty's gonna be very conscious of how much HP the Dondozo has remaining But what can you wave crash and when uh, the nice thing here though is unlike in its water form if you do wave crash into that volcarona you're not going to be getting a flame body activation because you're a fire type yeah certainly and the heat wave the more times joanne clicks that the more likely it is that sneezer or matty side of the field gets burned Dondozo now brought down very low but still not close enough as Nizla softens itself up after that close combat another wave crash now coming out into that sneezer having had its defenses lowers and that sneezer is going out with the tide this is tough, though, for Matty. I mean, he's taken a lot of recoil, a lot of damage from that close combat onto the Dondozo. Probably more than he really wanted, like 7 HP going up to 21 after the leftovers tick. And there is one Pokemon yet on Jern's side of the field, and it okay. is that Dondozo. <laughs> well, and this is really important. This Dondozo is coming in at full. Definitely not something that Matty wants to see, but Jern's positioned this really, really well. The Dondozo is unaware of the curse boosts from Dondozo on Matty's side of the field. Of course, after the curse, Dondozo on Matty's side is probably slower uh, than Jern's uh, Dondozo, and so it's just susceptible to a wave crash. And of course, it doesn't matter if the Volcarona's taunted, it's done what it needed to do. It's got some Quiver Dance boosts, and it's probably gonna be able to two-shot this Sneasler from here. Yeah, how do you deal with this Dondozo if you're Matty? With the dwindling resources remaining, Sneasler, hardly the bulkiest Pokemon, and uh, with just an Incineroar lurking in the back, the Dondozo's Matty on such low HP. Okay. Invisible Focus Ash on the Sneasler, hanging on with two one shotting. HP there. It's two shot. And, that's, it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's gonna be the Dark Claw, and there's no status activation. That could have been a really nice way for Matty to get into this game here. If you just put it to sleep with that Dark Claw, yeah, right. no. I think you do need to have a little bit of Dark Claw activation, but it's not likely that you're gonna get too many opportunities here. Yeah. I, and I, I think this is the, the opportunity that John's got. You don't need to click Heat Wave to, to put damage onto the Dondozo at all. All you need to do is to do that one HP required damage to the Sneasler and Terra Blast, even though it's normal, it's not really 
the strongest move out there as far as type coverage goes, it will still pick up the KO on the Sneasler there and will be able to do so with uh, an amount of accuracy. I also uh, want to call out the liquidation versus wave crash choice yeah, yeah. here as well. Makes a big difference in this spot because Giant doesn't have to take recoil to attack with his Dondozo. Yeah, and that, that means it's going to be able to dish out more and more liquidations versus Matty's Ozo Dondozo here. And here it is. That's going to be liquidation super effective now into this fire-type Dondozo. Can get a little bit confusing, trainers. The type chart is flipped on its head when it comes to terrestrialization, but that Dondozo was just then a pure fire-type. <laughs> now, we're all coming in from the back saying, well, what did I miss? And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't think it's going to like the greeting that it's going to be faced with. I, it, it's been a, a, a bit of an odd game in that, that Volcarona has stayed on the field pretty much undamaged the entirety of the game and it was able to yeah, you know, Matty's done a, a great job at stopping it doing lots and lots of damage. Uh, but the other way to do lots and lots of damage is to just keep clicking Heatwave over and over and over and over again. And I'm just thinking like, well, this, this Incineroar clearly isn't going to be able to clean up the game from here. It's uh, definitely game one for Joanna. I'm just thinking like, how can Matty adjust going into game two? Like, how do we stop that, that Volcarona or how does Matty stop that Volcarona from really just being able to apply that pressure after pressure after pressure, uh, turn after turn after turn, and be able to actually uh, knock it out a little bit quicker next time. Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, Dondozo's threatening super effective damage. It has Terra Fairy, the Volcarona, so at least good Terrestrialize away from super effective there. But you've got to target it early. And, uh, you know, Matty was doing a really good job of using the parting shot to keep the Volcarona in check. But ultimately, you know, it didn't need to be as boosted up in its special attack as it possibly could be. It was just mm. there dealing out enough chip damage every single turn. So certainly keeping it in check is something. You've got the Porygon 2, if you're Matty, that could go for a trick and the faster the Volcarona gets, obviously, the slower it would be in trick yeah. when the speed orders are reversed. Yeah. And it's a nice combination with your Dondozo as well. Uh, you go for the curse and you make yourself faster in trick room and then you increase your offensive capability, get a few wave crashes on the field and then in the late game, you've got a little bit of bulk, you've got that leftovers recovery, you get the yawn going onto the board and you kind of are able, it doesn't matter if you're faster anymore because yeah. your opponent's Pokemon are switching or asleep. Uh, so I, I kind of like the, the team composition choice that Matty's made. But I do think that, that in game one, Matty was really trying to uh, sort of target down maybe the Backscalibur and uh, the King Gambit coming out um, in the early game, trying to get the the Spore going. And I think there's a definite switch up there in the leads that Matty could make uh, to be able to deal with that a little bit better. Now he's got a little bit of information on how Joanna is going to actually approach this game. And, you know, maybe it's selfish of me, but I would like to see the Porygon 2 coming mm -hmm. to the game. I think it's that combination of being able to take those attacks, but also with a download boost, it actually puts out quite a lot of damage as well. And I, I quite like to see it going for its terror ground against the King Gambit in the early game, potentially. Right, yeah. and, uh, you know, start to, to whittle it down that way. Um, it's, it's a tough one because you, you want to bring the Golden Go as your main damage source if you're Matty. But yeah, Golden Go's not looking too happy against a lot of the Pokemon on, on Giant's team. Yeah, exactly. And of course, another key thing in what Joanne did there was conserve the Dondozo for so late in the game when Matthew right. just didn't have the resources to deal with it. Yeah. So it's just making sure that you're getting that Dondozo onto the field earlier if that is going to be in the back for Joanne. But it's going to be a switch up here. Rillaboom and King Gambit now coming out for Joanne as Sneasler and Dondozo for Matty. This is a nicer lead here from Matty, but I really like the adaptation that Chance made as well, uh, realizing that Amoongus and Incineroar from game one weren't really likely to come out. How do you switch this up? Well, Rillaboom pressures the Dondozo. It gets the fake out on the on the board. Sneasler on neither of these teams have fake out of their own. And so you, you do... You also put fake out pressure, but you also force this terror here coming out from the Dondozo. Yeah, and the Sneasler threatening such good damage into either of the slots on Joanne's side of the field. But time for Dondozo once more on Matty's side to go for its Terra Fire. The Dondozo on Joanne's incidentally running the Terra Poison here. So interesting to see how those match up into each other. But it's now so much safer from any grassy Ooh. glides from Rillaboom. Massive critical hit <laughs> fake out there onto the Sneasler. Don't see it dealing that much damage every day. The King Gambit able to get off this Swords Dance, and I believe we're going to be seeing a curse coming out from Dondozo, from Matty's Dondozo as well. So really, the stat boosts are real. They certainly are. And as before, Dondozo is not going to worry too much about the sword dance, but Sneasel certainly will. And I wouldn't be shocked to say that the critical hit on the fake out coming into Sneasler gives you a little bit more leverage, puts the Sneasler more likely to be knocked out by a not very effective sucker punch this turn. Right. And it makes it so much harder for the Sneasler to act. 
which means that King Gambit isn't so forced to have to go for its Terra Ghost in this situation. And Terra is one of those things where you do want to conserve it towards the end of the game, uh, just so you know exactly how your opponent's playing, exactly what four Pokemon and what Pokemon you need to Terra. So Matty having to Terra early here is potentially a disadvantage, but potentially that's exactly what he needs anyway. Yeah, exactly. Well, Dondozo coming out now for Joanne so much earlier than it did in the previous game, and that could be huge for Matty. But Terrasalization responding from Joanne once more into the King Gambit, so it's going to be a Terra Ghost. That means it's going to take zero damage from Fighting-type moves when once they were doubly super effective from the close combat on Sneasler. But this turn, Sneezler just wants a little bit of recovery, a bit of R&R &R after that critical hit fake-out. And Kowtow Cleaver was targeting down into that nice. slot, trying trying to pick up the knockout once it had been so softened up. You're now able to connect mm. down onto the King Gambit. Here we go. That's going to be threatening sleep on the next turn. We'd have to switch out to reset that. But of course, now Massey's done those are really threatened from Joanne's own. And yeah, you've got to be really careful in that situation. I like the Terra goes from Joanne saying like, well, I'm going to Kowtow Cleave because if you switch the Sneasler, then Sucker Punch doesn't do anything. Kowtow Cleave is a little bit more powerful than Sucker Punch. So you've got that sort of combination of, well, I might as well terror the Terra Ghost on the King Gambit because if they do go for the close combat and my Sucker Punch maybe doesn't quite get there, uh, then I'm not going to be knocked out with the King Gambit. But Matty's played it really, really well, stopping that King Gambit from really getting going. Um, it may be that in this situation, Joan's thinking, well, I'm kind of ahead enough to be able to stay in. That's exactly oh. what we're seeing here. And the Kowtow Cleave, yes, coming into the Sneasler, picking okay. up that KO. So no status condition coming out from the Dire Claw. That was Massey just saying, you know, I can only do not wear effective damage here, but I might get some kind of status condition. And now Joanne's Dondozo giving it a taste of its own medicine. Dondozo getting drowsy, and Joanne's is as well. It is really bedtime on the field right now, and King Gambit is going to lead the way with that, falling asleep at the end of this very turn. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, yeah, definitely, definitely a lot of yawning. It's still the morning, Charlie. I know. Yeah. Still, We've yeah. literally just started the stream, everybody. It's What's like going on? Round two, and we're already falling asleep. <laughs> here. No, I, I, and I think that's that's a worthy trade to be making. I think the Sneasler does give uh, John too many problems in the late game, especially with we know Rillaboom is in the back. You're kind of trading trading the uh, Sneasler in this case for the King Gambit going to sleep for an easier end game uh, where you can actually use that Rillaboom properly. And now it has the opportunity, of course, to switch in. It'll be interesting to see if Matty decides that the Don Dozo can just sort of sit there chilling on the field for a little while as well. Uh, it's not yet been threatened by anything that Jaya has to offer. It's already got a curse up. It's a full HP. There is grassy uh, terrain on the field as well, so compounding the recovery from leftovers. Yeah, really, really huge point to make there, Ben. It's going to help these Dondozos no end. Now, Incineroar was threatening super effective damage into the King Gambit that has access to knockoff, and it's something that Massey will have want to deal with sooner rather than later because it has a Defiant boost now from the Incineroar that just came in. This turn, though, Joanne's King Gambit will remain asleep. Oh, my oh, goodness! It it's the immediate Fisher Connect onto Massey's own Dondozo, no matter what the HP, no matter the type chart, that is going to be a one-hit knockout. Joan, liquidation was super effective. You didn't have to <laughs> click the Fisher, but you decided to anyway. And uh, yeah, well, one for one. Never click it again this <laughs> tournament. That is it. 100% Fisher hit rate. Uh, that's a big KO there. And of course, worth noting that if the Dondozo on Matty's side did decide to switch out into Incineroar, well, I don't know how exactly the probabilities work, but it probably would have knocked out that Incineroar or Amoongus instead, depending if which one Matty decided to switch in. Um, so, yeah, that's a, that's a real big blow. That's a, a Don Dozo that wanted to stay on the board for as long as possible and now no longer has any opportunity to. And, of course, well, it, it's, again, it's, it's a really nice trade for John to make. Both of your Pokemon are asleep, but you're two Pokemon to four. Um, you, you know, you had to, you've had to go to sleep, but you've made a trade to knock out a Pokemon each time over, and that, that's okay. Yeah, it certainly is. Joanne and King Gambit now taking a big knockoff here, but with the Pokemon advantage squarely in Joanne's court, that's uh, it could be just the resources that he needs, and King Gambit is going to remain asleep for another turn, so on the next turn, we'll definitely be waking up. Pollen Puff, super effective into Rillaboom. You can see the dividends that Assault Vest pays, boosting the special defenses of a Pokemon that's holding it, and uh, yeah, such a fascinating choice from Joanne to go for the Fisher there, because as you say, it was threatening super effective damage, uh, but also, I guess, you know, you're one game up, you think, 
well, yeah. how far can I push this tempo? Because this could yeah. just win me the game. It is the, it is the sort of move that you do look into when you've got a bit of space to do so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and now, now the, the difficult thing is that that uh, King Gambit is actually slower than the Incineroar, but this Rillaboom switching, even though the grassy terrain went, was a great time to bring it in, get that fake out. But King Gambit is just oh, like, nah, goodness. nah, we're not, we're not doing this, this, uh, this game. And, <laughs> I, and yeah, now. Now the thing is, is that the Incineroar is faster than the King Gambit, so you kind of have to suck a punch into the Amoongus, mm. or the Incineroar to be able to do any damage before a knockoff is able to get the KO. But uh, I think Joe is so far ahead in this game so far. There's two Pokemon on Matty's side of the field that really don't do too much damage. They do definitely have the advantage in this spot, but there is an unrevealed Pokemon for Joanne, and uh, likelihood is that that's going to be able to help dispatch both of these Pokemon on Matty's side. The guaranteed wake up on this turn for King Gamut to get that protect off. High horsepower move that we've seen really on the rise on Rillabooms in this format. Super effective damage into Matt's Incineral. Parting shot here, only the two Pokemon remaining for Matty, so no potential to switch out, but at least you get those drops to the, to the uh, attacks. Exactly, and yeah, guaranteed wake up guaranteed spore going into that King Gambit slot, just making sure that you're properly pressured. But that high horsepower, because Rillaboom hasn't, hasn't been intimidated yet, does so much damage to the Incineroar. The Incineroar gets knocked out by the Rillaboom at this turn, potentially, and then King Gambit at two plus is able to go for an attack. Sucker Punch, though, coming out from the King Gambit. Mm. Yeah, Sucker Punch there, of course, only dealing damage if the opponent is going for a damaging move. And Pollen Puff was targeting into the Incineroar. That move isn't redirected. This Amoongus is facing down all four of Joanne's Pokemon. Lil top four Joanne on another tear here and claiming Swiss round two in Gdansk. What a commanding way to <laughs> win round two here uh, in, in the tournament. I mean, look, look at how quickly that game went.